r slash ask reddit. Serious, people who've experienced the paranormal or seen cryptids and other unknown creatures, what's your story? Part 3. My family had just moved to a new house. This was our first time living in a house. My room was upstairs but I was too scared to be there alone since I was like 12. I stayed downstairs while my mom went to the store. I was lying on the floor next to the couch this couch was covering the door. I thought I heard the door open so I sat up to get my mom. As soon as I did I saw a curly-headed white little boy. My family is black. Apparently my siblings had been seeing them too. An old Asian lady, a crying baby, I even saw an white middle-aged man that looked to be living in the 1930s staring down at me from the balcony of the upstairs from the living one night. Never stayed home alone ever again after that. This is not a joke, I promise and I wasn't alone, as a boy I've always been fascinated with the idea of Sasquatch or Bigfoot. I thought with all the stories and Native American legends, they had to be real, I always thought they were a distant cousin of Homo sapiens and just branched off in the evolutionary family tree. In July 2017, I was hiking with my family of nine, two parents, four boys, including me, two girls and my German shepherd. We were returning to our car when I felt an eerie presence. Mind you there were no trees, just clear land and no big boulders for anything to hide behind. I turn around to the side of the hill that we climbed down from and saw a tall hair covered creature standing on two feet, I knew it wasn't a bear cause we don't have bears where I'm from. It was clearly a biped humanoid creature, it was tall, had long janky arms that went almost to the knees and kinda had a cone shaped head. I really wish I had a picture, then again people would still think it to be fake. While I was curious and wanted to look at it longer, all but my dad were freaking out and wanting to get in the car. As we started driving away I could clearly see it walking and it seemed to walk almost like a drunk man but with swinging arms. Really weird and I know it sounds BS, but I promise my whole family will tell the same thing and we haven't told many people and aren't seeking fame from it. Now I'm 21 and won't go in nature without a decent group of people just because of how bizarre the situation was and not wanting to be hurt. Edit, I forgot to mention that it was watching as we were staring back at each other for a few minutes, it seemed curious but with how tall it was I didn't want to find out its intentions. Friend's story but still creepy. Sam got a phone call from his friend, Kemo, one day, out of the blue asking if he could come pick him up to hang out. Kemo was a bit frantic sounding on the phone. Sam could hear Kemo's mom calling his name in the background but Kemo was ignoring his mom. Sam, hey Kemo, why are you ignoring your mom? Kemo that's just it. I'm home alone and this voice has been calling my name for the past 20 minutes. Sam came over right away and picked him up and they got out of there. There were a bunch more stories about this house that Kemo lived in as it was clearly haunted. Okay so I can finally tell my story on this platform. Any platform for that matter. This situation changed my mind on paranormal forever. So one day, I have no idea what day it was, it was a little bit ago now but it'll never leave me for as long as I live. I was taking my ex-girlfriend home after a long day. It was her mum's home or something. Quite a quiet area down a tight street if you understand what I'm saying, not the nicest of places to live but oh well. So we finally drive down and I reverse into this little parking area and we chat a little before the door opens with her two sisters in the distance, her dog. Or their dog, who knows her family weren't the most connected, and her grandma. They were watching my car waiting for my ex to get out and go inside. I kissed goodbye and watched over at her family because I was curious. I go home for the night and I believe the next day we meet back up and spend the day together. On the night when we pull up to go inside mine after our long day. I say it was nice seeing your sisters and your grandma. My ex just looks at me in confusion. What do you mean my grandma, she wasn't there, it was just my sisters. At this point shivers went down my spine. What do you mean your grandma wasn't there? I saw her right there with your sisters when they opened the door. The thing is at this point I flash back like I was in third person. I remember like she was right there. With her permed grey hair, her night dress with lavender patterns on it. She was a solid object because she was blocking my ex's sister slightly. What got to me more was me remembering the dog moving around her, her sisters looking at each other and minding their business. Then you get her grandma she was staring at me. Through my car lights. Like when you try looking at the driver on a night time when their lights are directly towards you. You can't see the driver but it's like she could see me, making direct eye contact somehow. It made me feel uneasy the more I thought about it after mentioning it. My ex and my mum thought I was making things up. Only thing is. I am not and I never will be. To this day on after such a situation. My mind on ghosts have changed ever since I had such a situation with such an encounter. 
When I was around 18 I used a Ouija board with some friends. So I'm from Wildwood, FL. Nearby is Ocala, the location where events took place, and there is this old graveyard that dates back to slavery, apparently this is where slave babies were taken and thrown in a hole. I had a Ouija board but was afraid to use it alone due to my grandma's stories. I'm hanging out with my now wife and some friends smoking a blunt and I asked them if they wanted to use the Ouija board. They reply yes but my wife wasn't having it eventually we decide yes. We get in the car we have a dog with us it's about four us guys and three women. We take a drive to that old graveyard and break out the board all fun and games right? Wrong. My wife stays back with the dog mind you this dog would not step foot out the truck when we got there, he was not happy he laid in the rear of the Tahoe we were in the entire night until we made it home, anyways as soon as we set the board down and the little piece you put your fingers on the piece immediately went to goodbye with no one touching it. We got freaked out wasn't sure what to do, so we move the piece and ask a question, again straight to goodbye about the third time we do it we eventually started feeling like it wasn't a good idea to be there, and we say goodbye. We go to a cemetery down a few miles down the road. And decide to use it. We ended up speaking to this man who was buried next to his wife. I remember we asked how he passed, he replied with poison. Then we asked if he knew who poisoned him, he replied with yes, his wife. I realized that this spirit board was nothing to play with. We had a friend who was murdered in his own home prior to this event. A few days later after the cemetery I no longer wanted the board so I gave it to the friends I was with. I ended up going over to their house and we decided to use it there, we ended up speaking to the same man from the cemetery. Who said we could speak to our friend? Speaking with our friend we asked if he knew who murdered him and he replied yes with the murderer's name. That was the last time I used it. Months later we all move in together. Like everyone from that night. Well one night one of the girls we was with was leaving to the store to grab more blunt wraps. As soon as she opened the door she screamed, went white as a ghost and was hysterically crying. We asked for what's wrong grabbed our guns looking at the door and she insisted something or someone was out there. We asked her to describe what it was and she said it was all black red eyes right at the door. As we are talking about it one of the guys that was with us that night said he had seen the same thing in the slave graveyard and has caught glimpses of it ever since. We moved out a week later and I haven't seen them old friends since. My family tells me ever since I used that board that I haven't really been the same. I remember so vividly and it scares me to even think or write about it. When someone asks me if Ouija boards are real or tells me they don't believe in them I reply with you really have to do it to see for yourself but I personally will never touch one again. BTW the man who our friend said murdered him was arrested for his murder months later. I don't usually tell this story in my adult life but it's absolutely true and my mom can back me up. When I was a teenager, I went to a boarding school. After the winter holidays, a family friend of ours, around the same age as I was, committed suicide in his family home. My mom drove the five hours and back to pick me up from school and take me to the services even though I didn't really know the kid. I mainly knew his older brothers and mom but no real connection to him. I want to reiterate that I only met this guy a handful of times. After I got dropped off back at school, I started experiencing a weird headache that I initially coughed up to just a simple migraine. Unfortunately it got so bad that I had to go to the infirmary for an overnight stay. Here's where it gets weird. Once I was able to catch some sleep, I began to have the strangest lucid dream. I was still in the infirmary and in the same room but the place looked like an unfinished garage. I walked around and called for assistance when I encountered the kid who had just committed suicide. I looked at him and he looked at me, wearing all white, and I asked him why? And he goes you know why. Okay, I'll admit I'm not sure why I asked why. I think it was a why for many things. Like why are you here? Why me? Why did you do it? but his answer said a lot even though I couldn't explain why or how. I immediately woke up crying and sweating a bit. About two days later, my mom calls me and tells me people from home are seeing a psychic to try to cope with the loss. She then took a serious tone and said she had something to tell me. Before she could speak another word, I immediately burst into tears telling her about my dream and how it felt so real. Then my mom's voice started to tremble and then went into her reason for calling. My mom's friend, who is the mother of the then girlfriend of the kid who committed suicide, went to the said psychic and the psychic mentioned that he visited me. Even my mom's friend was perplexed because even she knew I had little to no connection to this kid other than meeting a few times in passing and notably, he made me laugh, literally every time. Anyway, I guess the psychic told my mom's friend that the kid always had a crush on me but felt there was never a good opportunity to connect. She said that he visited me during the night. I have no idea how this unexplainable occurrence slash coincidence happened but it made me believe in the other side. 
the smirk he gave me after he said you know why was, in retrospect, discernibly flirty but I just chalked it off as him being funny as I didn't know I was dreaming. I never tell people this fascinating experience because I tried once and I could tell I sounded ridiculous. I'm glad I can just put it here and maybe one of you will appreciate it, as long as you believe it. I have a few tales I can shorten. 1. When I was around 9 my two best friends, they were sisters, were getting packed up to move to another state. My mom and me came over to help, and after they were done, we went outside to play with the older one's brand new smartphone, at the time it was exciting but it was just a basic LG that had like a 4 inch screen, she was giggling and taking pictures around their apartment complex, when she leaned against their door to take a picture of a mattress they'd leaned against the wall between their apartment and their neighbors. She froze and stood up slowly, before gesturing to me to come look, not speaking because I guess she didn't want to show her little sister. I came over and looked at the screen, and froze as well. In the picture was a hooded figure holding something to its chest, slumped over with an expression of pure rage on its half-hidden face. It was shadowy, not like a real person, and very small, but it almost looked like an angry mother and an infant. That image is still burned into my mind today. 2. Even shorter, one time my grandmother took me to a haunted hotel in a tourist town about two hours from where we live. We decided to go all the way upstairs and use the binoculars on the roof to look out because the place was on top of a hill and you could see nearly everything. We were the only two guests there at the moment, and there was only one clerk at the desk. We started walking up, and around the third set of stairs I paused and heard footsteps behind us. I would have ignored it, except it came from below and to my immediate left. I glanced briefly out of curiosity, to find nothing. I froze and told my grandma, who joked about it being the ghosts. When we started again the same thing happened, following us up to the top stairs. It really freaked me out because we never saw anyone else there but us and the clerk. 3. Cryptid, one day I was hanging out with the same friends from the first story, when we spotted shadows across the property on our neighbor's landbound boat. Three shadows, of varying sizes. We watched them for about 20 minutes, and they never left the boat, and I told them how I don't think they were human. Only a few days later I was watching TV late at night with my dad when we heard metal crashing slash clanging coming from outside. And I mean loud. We had a giant metal shop building, and my dad asked if I'd come with him to go see if the loose tree branch from our great oak had fallen far enough to be banging against the side by the wind. I followed him out in slippers and clutching my coat tight to my chest. About four to five yards from the front door slash opening, my dad stopped to glance at the tree, and I shuffled my feet before turning the other way, towards the piled up sticks and brush blocking the other side of the building. I froze when I saw two red eyes staring at me. I reached out shakily to tug on my dad's shirt and point, where he paused when he saw it too. We couldn't make out a shape, but it was just about as tall as him, and I could see just barely what I think was a fur-covered limb resting on the corner of the shop. It felt like nearly an hour, in reality only about 5 to 10 minutes, before my dad cleared his throat and took a step forward, to go see what the thing was. The eyes disappeared and heard the breaking of sticks and heavy footsteps as it disappeared, and a few seconds later it rounded the clump of trees and I saw it crossing my neighbor's property way too fast, headed roughly in the direction of the landlocked boat. Never saw it again, but always watched for shadows in the boat. So in the late 1800s one of my ancestors was involved in witchcraft, that's all I know. Forward to 2009 when I was nine, my dad built me and my brother a room next to the garage in the home. Sometimes we were scared because we thought a witch was living in the garage. Now we used to get a lot of bloody noses which I didn't attribute to anything. In 2017 in a new house, things got physical, me and my brother woke up with scratches on our backs which have left scars, which can still be seen. It happened in our sleep and none of my family is malicious in that sense. In 2021, a man said a witch traveled through a certain mirror in our house, in our old house my room was on the other side of the wall that had the very mirror. The man did something, lifted a curse, I guess, I don't know, and that same night we all got bloody noses, it was weird cause we were spread out among the country. We destroyed the mirror and haven't had bloody noses since then, I still have the scars and initially I thought the man was crazy but I don't know. Back in June of 2020 my friend, his wife, my dad and some of my friend's friends all went on a ghost investigation at Benson Grist Mill. It's a 100 plus year old mill that was made by one of the leaders of the Mormon church at the time. Once I got onto the property I instantly felt like I had an apple lodged in my throat. I thought it was anxiety and I just brushed it off. We entered into a house that was on the property and tried to get an if recording. I felt like something was trying to shove me to the ground. I then met up with my friend in the basement of the mill and I began to cry for no reason. 
His wife helped me get out of the mill and calm down. After about 30 minutes I felt the presence of a child telling me to go to the schoolhouse. It's as if the child was trying to comfort me. I found out later there was a little girl who died near the mill. I woke up the next morning with bruises on my neck. I'm late to the party but I've had a few experiences. The freakiest one. I was in White Plains, New York visiting my cousins when I was around 14. We were all about to go out to dinner but two of my cousins and I decided to stay home and watch a movie instead. We were in the den which faces the stairway to go to the second floor of the house, and all of the lights other than that of the den were turned off. About halfway through the movie, I heard a noise so I looked upstairs where I saw long black legs walking into a bedroom at the top of the stairs. The lights turned on for about 30 seconds, then turned off and the black legs walked out of the room and stood at the top of the stairs. Eventually they walked away for a few minutes and came back and did the same thing, this time leaving the lights on. I started calling out asking who was there but it just stood at the top of the stairs facing us for several moments before finally leaving to the end of the hall we couldn't see. The windows on the second floor of the house did not open and the only way to access the second floor was through the stairwell we were facing. We called our uncle to come home saying someone was in the house. When he came home we all searched the second floor but didn't find anyone there. We did however find a sealed off tiny door in the back of the closet at the back end of the hallway. We ripping off the tape and wallpaper covering it, and discovered a small hidden room with a dinner table and chairs and a children's teapot set set up on the table. I never visited again after that, and my uncle and his family moved out a few months later. I, with absolute certainty, experienced a malicious haunting. I was living in England as a missionary, ex-Mormon, and we had just moved flats because the sister missionary pair had been taken out of the town due to lots of harassment while they walked around. Their flat was way nicer than ours, so we got the go-ahead to move in. The sister missionaries had all had a terrible time for years in this town. Sickness, depression, physically fighting one another, you name it. While I was there one sister broke her foot, another had become incredibly depressed, and another had developed a heart condition. Well we move in after they leave, and immediately things start to get weird. My companion and I become mean and bitter to one another. We were fighting constantly over the most ridiculous things. I couldn't sleep, which is never usually a problem as a missionary, because by the end of the day you're exhausted, and I was losing track of time. At one point my companion and I realized during our study time that we'd both just been staring at the wall completely zoned out, and had no concept of how long we'd been doing it. The worst part though was that I could not shake this feeling that I was being watched. It always felt like if I could just turn around quick enough I would see someone standing right behind me. One day we get home and I stay downstairs while my companion goes upstairs. Technically you're always supposed to stay within sight of one another, but when you're in your own flat most tend to drop that rule. Well eventually I hear him messing around in the kitchen. There's a window in the living room that you can see into the kitchen, but it's fogged glass so it's really just shapes and outlines. I looked through that window and I saw the outline of my companion moving around in the kitchen. Not even a minute later and I look up to the sound of my companion coming bounding down the stairs. I asked him when he'd gone back upstairs, and he replied that he'd never come downstairs since we'd been home. My blood ran cold and I immediately had this all-consuming feeling that I was being watched. I panicked and told my companion that we had to leave. Every fiber of my being told me that something awful was about to happen to us. That whatever was there hated us, and would hurt us the moment it found a way to. A few seconds later our phone rings. It's our zone leaders calling to tell us that they'd had a random feeling to call us and tell us that they wanted us to pray over our flat. Neither I nor my companion had called or told them anything. We did, and immediately it all felt better. After that day nothing ever happened again. I'm no longer religious, but I can't explain or deny what I felt and experienced. Let me explain that I consider myself rational and am, for all intents and purposes, more towards science and logic than faith or the supernatural. That said, I have no explanation for this following other than it is what I experienced. I'll do my best to summarize it. I'm four or under, I have a brother that's four years younger than me and he wasn't born yet, and I'm spending the night at my grandparents' house. They are staying up late to watch the Olympics but the plus side to that is that I get to sleep in their bed, normally, I would sleep in my dad's old bedroom. I am having trouble falling asleep, a common occurrence, I never slept well, but seeing the light of the TV from the other room is calming. Suddenly, I feel cold. I don't feel scared but my body gets the shivers. A new light is in the room and it is to my right. Scared, I slowly begin to turn and, at the side of the bed, is an older woman. She is translucent and has a slight blue tint. She is not scary but her presence is. She is sitting in the rocking chair, 
holding a small dog, and looking right at me. I immediately go under the blankets. I'm scared and I turn to the other side of the bed. My eyes are slammed shut. I stay like this for what feels like an eternity until, still under the blankets, I open my eyes. A new color is outside of the blankets, a warm orange replaces the light blue. Like a fool, I begin to peek out of the blankets and, at the other side of the bed, there are men on fire. They are just standing there but they are burning. I turn around in bed and the woman is there but now she is standing. Her mouth doesn't move but, in my head, I hear a voice say, they aren't there. They can't hurt anymore, and, at that point, I don't remember anything else. The next morning, I didn't get out of bed until my parents arrived. It took a lot of coaxing but, eventually, I am able to tell my parents my nightmare. They are amused by a child's imagination. As a lark, my dad tells his parents. My grandfather, a cold and stoic man, almost passes out. When he comes to, he is crying and nonverbal. When he eventually calms down, he tells my father that, when he got back from Vietnam, he would lie in bed and suffer from panic attacks. His mother would stand over him and calm him as he relived his days as a soldier manning a flamethrower. While he slept, she would sit in the rocking chair and make sure he rested. To this day, I have no explanation for it. I don't know why I saw his memory. I have no real supernatural experience other than this but it has burned into my brain forever. Okay, I've told this story many times, but I swear this happened and don't know how to explain this. Went out to dinner with some mates and we all left for a bar and left there at 2am after last call. I lived near the bar and I only had two drinks cause I had university classes the next day, and my friend had work but he also drove, so she took our other two friends home who got pissed. I started to walk home. I then got to my row of streets and for some reason decided to take the alleys as I knew my neighborhood well. In the first alleyway, I noticed a stranger on the complete opposite side who was walking in the same direction as me and I brushed it off because I thought they were just going home like me. The thing is my alleyways were fairly lit while not being so full of light but it had a creepy vibe in general as alleyways do. I started to walk faster after I saw this person by the 3rd street and I lived in the 8th street down, but they were still there by the 5th and I started to jog then run, and by the seventh alley I stopped and saw this person stop as well, and for a few seconds, I swear it looked like they were wearing the same clothes that I was wearing and maybe even looked a little bit like me. Here's the kicker, this individual then started to full-on sprint towards me, and I flipped the fuck out and sprinted myself to home and I could hear the loud smack of heavy footsteps and I bolted to my house and got my keys out and entered the house immediately. Once I got in, my mother was still awake and just about to go to bed as she had the day off and asked me what was wrong, and when I did, she called the police and they came and asked me what happened and they searched the area, and in the end mentioned I should check in with my doctors. People to this day don't believe me or have dismissed me after some time repeating this story, but I swear to God or whatever entity that runs this universe, I know what I saw, and I have never been more scared slash fearful in my life. Here in Chicago there is a mothman who flies around O'Hare Airport. I didn't really think much about that story until I took a flight recently. I always park out at Economy Lot G and take an airport transit bus into the terminals. Maybe because it was pre done that made me think of the Mothman, so decided to ask the driver, a somewhat elderly woman, about it. And she said, baby girl, I have seen lights that stay in one spot and a man with wings flying over the parking lot. Those smartphones, smart houses, smart cars, it's all too much for me. But that winged man has been around since I started in 1989. I took it as her way of saying she had seen the Mothman. Also a few of my co-workers have said they have seen the Mothman during late filming hours throughout the city. My last posting in the army was at Fort Campbell, where we lived in base housing. We had an infant and a four-year-old when we moved in, and we used our front room as a playroom for them. One night, my wife and I both heard footsteps running down the hallways towards the front of the house. We thought our son was out of bed, so we went to check it out. Nothing. We passed it off as just hearing things, but it happened more than once. The big moment came during the day, though. While our son was playing, one of his electronic toys kept going off. When we went in to ask him to play with something else for a while. He was on the other side of the room. Again, easy to pass off. Until the toys started going off at night. My wife and I are both very open to the possibility of spirits, and I have always been sensitive to old and haunted places. So, we decided to just talk to the entity. We explained that it was okay to stay here and play with the toys, but not when we were all trying to sleep. It never happened at night again. Fast forward a few months, and we are at a barbecue with our old neighbors. We had moved out at this point and another family had moved in. 
we casually asked if they had encountered the ghost child, and both the new family and our old neighbor looked shocked. Apparently, the family that lived there before us had reported the same kind of disturbances, including catching glimpses of a little ginger boy in the window from outside the house. Meanwhile, the family currently living in the house was being terrorized, to the point that they were all sleeping in the same room for fear of this spirit. We explained how we simply asked the spirit to stop disturbing us at night. I never found out if the new family's situation got any better. I have a few. 1. My uncle was in his, his final moments, he was a good person, also very devoted to the Virgin Mary, we are all Catholics. While praying we smelled the most pleasant aroma you could think of, then we realized my uncle died and he was smiling. 2. My brother participated in a ritual with several idiot teenagers, he was also an idiot teenager back then. Turns put he brought home a spirit who tormented us for two years, we needed three exorcism in the house and I have feel peace in the house since then. 3. In my country there's a story about a huge dog that takes care of drunk people. I was a drunk person walking home when I saw a group of people calling me, they were going to rob me. Out of the blue those guys turned around and started running away from me, I noticed a huge dog, huge, almost the size of my hip, and I'm tall, I asked him to accompany home and he did, it disappeared when I reached my doorstep. I have taken a few beers but I never got drunk again. About 25 years ago when I lived in a big city my best friend's girlfriend was murdered. Blunt force head trauma. Her body wasn't found for a while, killer dumped it under a remote bridge. About two weeks afterwards, and a few weeks before her body was found, I went to a psychic that had an ad up in a shop I'd walk past occasionally. She was an older lady, and I went to her house. I took great care to not disclose my real name, address, history, etc., and I was careful to not share information during our session. So she's talking about something unremarkable then all of a sudden she spins to her side and starts moaning. She grabs her head and says, oh my head, my head, oh no, oh it hurts, oh, don't don't don't. I'm not reacting while this is going on, I didn't want to influence proceedings and in any case it didn't make sense until weeks later. She's pale and crying, then she evens out a bit and listens and nods. She eventually says to me, she wants you to tell her daughter she's okay, and she loves her very much, and to always listen to Nana. The girl that died had a four yo that her mum ended up raising. And yes, they were Italian, but with an Anglo name through marriage. I think about that sometimes. There was no way she could have known. And yes, I did end up speaking with the girl's mum about it, and giving the little girl a hug and I told her that her mum loved her so much and would always be with her. Never went back to the psychic. So when I was with my ex she was in VT at the time. We were FaceTiming and she puts the phone on the bed. So when she came back into view of the camera, she's just smiling at me. She then picks up a small square piece of paper like origami paper and a lighter. Still smiling the whole time she burns the piece of paper. She then picks up the phone and when she came back in view of the camera, she had no idea what I was talking about. She said she didn't burn anything or have any paper or a lighter. It creeped her out as she already thought her apartment was haunted. It was freaky the way her face was frozen still just smiling. Then burning something. It was like when she put the phone down something else came on camera. I'll never forget that devious empty smile. First and foremost, I don't really believe in the paranormal or anything. I also saw what I can only describe as a monster. I live in rural western PA and one night while dropping a friend off after a party, I do not drink and was totally sober, this thing just runs across the road in front of us. It was very tall. It was quick but it made this bound across the road and I would estimate it was 7 or 8 feet tall. It was very, very skinny and he totally dark grey. It had two arms, two legs, and a head like a person. There were no distinguishable features on its body or face. No eyes or mouth or markings that I noticed in the flash of it leaping across the road. To this day the only thing I've ever seen that I cannot explain. This happened about two years out of high school. I had this really vivid dream on Thursday night, about being chased up a hill with coyotes or wolves howling. Bolt upright in the M. Weird just a dream. Go about my day. That night, four of us were hanging at this friend of mine's house at the time, which bordered basically untracked nor Cal wilderness, Trinity Alps. It's midnight, we're kids, and we're bored. We decide to go for a night hike. So we head out into the wilderness behind his house for quite a ways. After a long while we arrive at the base of a hill that was connected to a mountain spur. There's a deer track heading up it. I've seen this hill. In my dream. So that's strange. I mention it. They think I'm just messing with them so we decide to climb, 
following the deer track. We climb a ways. Suddenly, at the base of the hill behind us, a deafening chorus of coyote howls erupts, exactly like in the dream which I had just related. We're kids and now we're pretty freaked so now we're running up this hill. We do so for a ways until we get to this large flat spot at the top, which levels out for a while before it becomes connected to the mountains behind it. Coyotes are loud as hell behind us. We cross into this clearing. The moment we cross the boundary, the coyotes stop. Like someone flipped a switch. It's dead silent. Not a blade of grass stirring. Hair on the back of our neck stands up. Something is really strange here. Then we hear singing. Like you'd hear at a First Nations ritual or event. Coming from below, out of the ground. Drums too. We're miles from civilization. This breaks our nerve and we just bolt. Eventually we find out way back to civilization. We later found out that the area we were in was a disputed burial ground for the oval Native American tribe who were in a legal battle to win rights. To this day, none of us can explain it. Four of us were there. Four of us remember it the same way. To know. I was a little kid playing outside. It was a nice sunny day and my brother just happened to have went inside. It suddenly got dark so I looked above me and I saw what looked like a buzzard but like 100x bigger. It flew overhead and landed in the cornfield by my house but I could no longer see it because we live on a hill. I remember this so vividly but to this day I can't think of what that could have been. When I was a teenager me and my mom were talking about some crap in my living room and we hear he 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 that tickles. Now some of you may recognize that as the voice line for a tickle me Elmo toy. My brother used to have one years ago by that point. Except we didn't have it anymore and we searched all the cabinets and couldn't find it. Needless to say frick Elmo. My grandfather told me this story when I was staying at his place a couple of years ago. I don't remember how it came up exactly, but I think it fits this thread well. It was so odd and out of the blue, and I was so taken aback that I wrote down all the details that I could remember after the fact, so this isn't a word-for-word -word transcription, but it'll suffice. Anyways, back in the 1960s, my grandfather on my dad's side was drafted into the army for the Vietnam War. He gets discharged in late 1972, and drifts apart from all of his war buddies, except for one. They live remarkably close to one another in Washington state, and both exhibit some serious post-war PTSD issues. Therefore, they both decide to go on a hunting trip together, in around the autumn season of 1973, to try to find healing or closure post-war. As he tells it, he would always hunt deer in the woods behind his house. In those days, his home was more of a cabin, with basic necessities. It's probably late afternoon in rural Washington state. Anyone who's been in the Pacific Northwest forest knows how thick and dense the foliage and trees are. Not to mention the fog. You can't see far ahead of you. Sight lines become blurred. Sounds around you become amplified. This sense of isolation causes your blood pressure to rise. So, my grandfather and his friend from Nam are both hunting off trail, tying bright markers on tree branches as they move through the underbrush, so they don't get lost. Suddenly, they hear a sound. It's the blaring sound of a train horn. It's so loud, it causes the two men to become disoriented. My grandfather recalls that he fell to his knees, hands on ear, screaming, feeling his throat moving air, yet not hearing it. This sound doesn't seem to have direction. The sound is all-encompassing. It's everywhere. The ground is shaking. And, like a bad cliché, as soon as it began, it stopped, dissipating in an instant. They both are kneeling there, stunned. Their ears are ringing so badly they can't hear their own voices. Their mouths move, but nothing happens. As the sun sets, they begin to head back, obviously spooked beyond belief. As their eardrums are shot, they scribble notes to each other on a notepad as they hike back to my grandfather's cabin. As they are heading back, they see something hanging behind a tree up ahead on the trail. Its outlines are blurred, but as it floats, the best way my grandpa described it to me, towards them it's revealed. It's themselves. It wasn't like looking in a mirror per se. Because it was a creature. My grandfather felt it. The thing was blurry and fuzzy, but my grandfather, in his early thirties at the time, said that he saw himself as an old man, white beard, frail, sunken eyes. He had to squint, but his facial features were the same. His war friend, however, had a bullet hole in his head. The figure then morphed into black. An eternal void. Death. The early evening pinkish-orange sun rays just ended when they reached this blackness. They panicked at this point, running backwards into the woods, screaming like madmen. As darkness fell, they decided to keep on going, refusing to camp out in those woods. When recounting this story for me, 
my grandfather, never overly religious, said. Op, I don't know what in the hell that thing we saw was, but I know for sure. And I mean damn sure, that it wasn't from this earth. What still bothers me is that I never saw what it actually looked like. I thought after the fact that it might have been a manifestation of Satan, because it was evil. And I'll tell you, I saw true evil in people during the war. But that thing, op, I don't know. It was something else. It was an evil fucking bastard, and if I would have gotten closer, well he trailed off there, but his uncomfortable, haunted glance practically finished the rest. After sprinting for a few miles, their flashlights luckily illuminating their trail markers, they reached the cabin, the night sky completely moonless. They anxiously stayed in the cabin until sunrise, their loaded hunting rifles next to them at all times, the windows and doors locked, blinds all shut, no lights on. If that thing was still out there, their wooden door would have been a relatively fragile barrier. Their anxiety-filled pacing must have made the time slow to a crawl. At one point they broke down and began praying, neither man ever being raised religious. Remind you, these are two battle-hardened, Vietnam veterans that both saw combat. They may have had PTSD but for something to scare both of them to this degree, yeah, it bothers you, doesn't it? Personally, it makes my skin crawl. Yet, with this said, no other strange encounters or experiences happened that night, or ever again for my grandfather. He moved shortly thereafter to a different town in Washington and promptly met my grandmother. Refuses to this day, nearly 50 years later, to step foot into any forest. Sadly, my grandfather said that the thing he and his friends saw in the woods that night was a bad, accurate omen for their lives. My grandfather has been struggling with alcoholism his entire life. Even today, he has had a liver transplant and still drinks daily. His friend however, committed suicide in 1975. He couldn't handle his own personal demons. Perhaps if there had been proper mental health services back then, things would have turned out differently. One night we were driving home from a campground in North Alabama where we'd been visiting family. The roads were dark and twisty. As I turned one corner, I saw a creature in the ditch in the flash of my headlights. It looked exactly like an albino Bengal tiger eating a deer carcass. It was so shocking that I didn't say anything, just clenched up and my heart was racing. I glanced over at my wife and she was gripping the armrests with white knuckles. Without prompting her with what I saw, I said did you see that? She nodded and said, was that an albino tiger eating a deer? Strangely, or because I was so freaked out, we didn't turn around. I told myself it was some garbage bags or something, but the fact that my wife and I saw exactly the same thing and that I saw it raise its head with bloody jaws bothers me to this day. For the record, North Alabama has a regional cryptid called the Alabama White Thing, sometimes, White Thang, which appears as a large white cat, a wolf the size of a horse, a shapeless white form, or a large white humanoid. So, I guess we saw the white thang. Trigger warning for death and childbirth if anyone is sensitive to that. Skip 1 minute and 48 seconds to the end of the video. My mom passed away when I was young. Very young. Like I have one fuzzy memory of her. So this story is secondhand, but has been recounted to me independently by my two older siblings in the exact same way. It sends chills down my spine just to think about it. When my parents went to the hospital to deliver my younger sibling, I and my two older siblings were spending the night at a godparent's house. We all slept in the same room in little sleeping bags since they had no kids of their own and no guest room. My siblings told me that when my parents came home, my dad went straight to bed but my mother kissed us all on the forehead, told us she loved us, and that she'd see us in the morning. I'm not sure if I was awake for this as I was only four years old, but both my older siblings witnessed it. Here's the thing, my mom had already passed away in the hospital due to a cardiac embolism. She never came home. My dad wasn't even home yet. My siblings are not the type to pull my leg or joke about our mother's death. I've only heard this story once or twice from the both of them, and they both sincerely and honestly believe that her spirit came to visit us before she passed. And afterward. A few years ago when my oldest sibling turned 21, he went out drinking with my father he's the only one who my dad did this for. A few drinks in, my dad explained that he hadn't been entirely honest about our mother's death, Apparently she had been resuscitated but due to the nature of the embolism, I don't have a ton of medical knowledge and avoid researching this for my own mental health, she didn't have brain activity and would have to be on life support. My father made the difficult choice not to continue with life support. I believe that when they resuscitated her, her soul came to see us. I still believe in ghosts to this day, and aside from a few unexplained occurrences in my childhood home haven't had any first-hand experiences since. Thank you for watching. 
Please like and subscribe and tell us if you believe in the paranormal and have you ever had a paranormal experience.